Hey there, uh, YouTube land. Big Dave here. I hope everybody's having a great summer. Um, it's getting warm out, you know, so you have to go enjoy yourself while you can. So I thought I'd make a quick video today about everyone's favorite topic. Well, it seems to be um, about mouthpieces and ligatures um, and just give you a few thoughts. Now, one thing I want to tell you is that really the ultimate thing is for you to select what works for you and that you find the most advantageous to the types of playing that you have to do. Um, some people need darker type of mouthpieces, some people need brighter, louder. Um, you know, there's so many options uh, that are available. And, um, but I just thought I would take a few minutes today and talk really quickly about uh, some things that uh, I do myself um, so that you could consider it, you know, in your own, uh, you know, in your own way, whatever you're doing. All right, so first of all, um, with the tenor, I, I almost always play tenor. 90% of the time, that's what I'm doing. So I have two tenors that I use uh, back and forth. And on each tenor, um, I have two mouthpieces, a louder, brighter mouthpiece, and a darker mouthpiece, but not a dull mouthpiece. It's just a little bit darker, um, and also that I know that I can play um, more softly in the low register, and um, you know, and I have one picked out for each horn. So I've made some changes, uh, you know, in the last year or so, because I'll tell you, like I just said, it's very individual. Now, I had a lot of problems in my mouth, and I had some uh, surgery and stuff, so uh, I've been getting over those problems, and um, I'm kind of back to normal right now, so uh, I'm back to playing on some more, uh, I would say, more open mouth pieces, where for about two years or so, I was using pretty close mouth pieces because I had too many problems going on uh, in my mouth. So anyway, uh, let's just take one one tenor first. Um, recently, and I would say the last, I don't know, while, I've been using this uh, medium chamber Van Doren T9. Now, it has um, a pretty nice inside. There's a lot of room for air. It has a rollover baffle, and it looks like a little hill. That's how you know it's a rollover baffle. Okay? Um, it's not a big baffle, and it's not really high or pronounced. It's just kind of more like um, an auto link would be, an STM. All right, and um, I tried several ligatures on this mouthpiece, um, and when I sit to play my actual music, and that's the way I test ligatures, by the way. I take out like two pieces of music that I know have certain challenges in them, and one of them would be how I can jump around uh, with larger intervals, like say uh, a G with the octave key, maybe down to a low D, you know, bum bum, right? So you have a big space there, um, and also some repeated low notes, ba 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 ba, and then also some repeated high notes. Um, so I take all that into consideration when I test out to see what ligatures uh, I would be using. So I probably tried about five or six ligatures on here, and um, what I ended up with was actually one of my uh, Autolink ligatures. I found it gave me the most neutral sound, but it had some um, definition and brightness to it, and I was able to articulate my low notes quite well. So that's really important. I had other ligatures were either um, a little more stuffy or they uh, were more resistant in certain notes, uh, either in the middle or the low register. But uh, without being biased, you know, just playing through ligatures, this is the one that worked on here, and that's it. It's actually, it's not even straight, this ligature. It's kind of, it's a weird ligature. If you put it on an auto link, because this is crooked and it's in the wrong place, it actually doesn't fit right. But it works great on here, because there's no bar on the top. You can even see, if you look at it, how the whole thing is off in the wrong place. So this is kind of a weird ligature that somebody might say, oh man, I don't want to be bothered with this. But this is the ligature that works on here, you know. Um, and I can also very quickly adjust it upper back, 
uh, if I want to. I can even move it slightly on the read a little bit one way or the other. And um, it, it all helps to adjust it. So that's my brighter, louder mouthpiece on uh, my one horn. And my uh, more rounded, uh, darker mouthpiece on there is my very old, this must be almost, I don't know, 30 years old. I don't know how old this thing is. This is my old T35, which I've used for a lot of different um, kinds of uh, classical jobs and um, some show book things, and you know. But it's been around a really long time. It has almost no baffle. It's a big round, open inside mouthpiece. Um, but it does go down. Like if you see the throat, it gets a little bit smaller. So that's where you get your uh, air pressure from. You know, the the throat down here gets a little bit smaller. Um, and this is a lower opening too. This is like a six and a half opening, where the other is a nine. But believe it or not, um, I the reeds are not. You know, I use on here a two and a half traditional, or sometimes a three ZZ Jazz, um, and on here. I use like a three and a half cc jazz, um, or you know maybe a three medium Rico would be on on here. So, um, but this has been around a really really long time. So and it serves me well now. I never went and got another one. All the everything's worn off. Um, the ligature on here, uh, I kind of like this one. This is the new uh, one screw Van Dorn ligature. Uh, it fits good on here, and I can adjust it easily. I kind of like it. But on this particular mouthpiece, I also like the light Rovner that has the center cut out. And the reason I like it is because I can articulate the lower notes really quickly. Um, this one is a little bit different, but it also has an evenness to all the registers that I like. All right, so that's my bright, loud, and my dark, uh, darker, but not dull. You know, like, I also think you want to think about that. Um, a mouthpiece that's dull, it's hard to work with because it doesn't allow you to get any projection or volume. And then you're working to make this projection or volume. So uh, you got to be careful. There's a difference between dark and dull. Okay, so let's go to my other tenor. My loud, bright mouthpiece. Um, I was using a T9, and recently um, I've been using a T10. Now... Um, it's a little bit bigger, and it has a nice big inside, and it has a, uh, a rollover baffle, but it's not too extreme. But there's a lot of room in there for air, so it has a big sound. And um, right now, the thing that I picked out recently to go on here after testing a bunch of ligatures, this is an Ishimori, a copper ligature. But I did like some of the other Ishimori ones, too. But this is the one I felt, again, the thing with the tenor is the response in the low register. And I thought that this had the best response for me in the low register. And that's why I chose it. Um, so, uh, the reeds at the moment, you know, on here, uh, I'm using a two and a half Gonzales, which is kind of like a three soft in the Ricos. It's about that size. Um, I find right now it's working good. Sometimes I use a, a three ZZ Jazz, but they're kind of buzzy on here. So I prefer, like just recently I was trying the Gonzalez. Um, and so my darker mouthpiece on that horn is this uh, T95. And um, again, it's darker, but it's not dull. Now you might say, wow, that's a you know another big mouthpiece. But if you mix it with the right reed, and by the way, I can use the exact same reed on both. Um, I can use the, the uh, two and a half Gonzales on here. Um, and like if I was using a Rico, which I could, it's just that right now with the, all this humidity and weather, the Gonzales seem to be playing better. So uh, the Ricos are kind of put away right now. And um, I also felt the ZZ Jazz were really buzzy. So I got those put away, and I've been using the um, Gonzalez two and a half. Are giving me a nice core to the tone, and I can articulate uh, well with them. So, um, but anyway, oh yeah, the ligature on here that I like 
um, is a regular Rovner Dark, I guess they call it. And um, this is the one that, again, lets me articulate and hold together the low notes um, if I'm reading some music. The, like, for example, the light Rovner on here doesn't work as well. Um, it gives me, like, a brighter upper register, but the low register, it gives me, like, a funny kind of resistance to some of the notes. So um, that's why I prefer this one. All right. So um, I don't want to make this video too long. The, um, the point uh, here is that uh, you need to find what works on your horn and works what best for you um, because there are so many options and um, you know uh, just right now uh, I happen to be using these Van Dorns because uh, they they seem to work for me without too much trouble um, I have auto links I used those for years some of them are really worn out and um, they've been repaired and some I repaired myself okay but uh, those I kinda put away for now um, and I've been using what I showed you today. So anyway, um, so in your journey, you know, you got to go try different things out, um, but not go too crazy. So anyway, um, I hope this was helpful to you, and um, we'll talk again. All right, have a nice day.